There was a second struggle in Jonah's life. Not only was he out of touch with his surroundings, he was also out of touch with his message. He'd been so close to the proclamation of the word, never bothered to get to the heart of his message and its implications for the world over. He saw himself on the inside of a fish, enjoying the fact that he knew God was listening to him. You're a God of mercy, you're a God of kindness, but failing to realize the implications of what that had for the message of those all over the globe and began to look at it only in provincial terms. You see, the point is this, it is possible for you and me to be in touch with the verbiage of the message without recognizing its implications for our own lives and for the lives of the peoples of this world. I think of the great story in the Old Testament, 2 Kings chapter 5, where a man called Gehazi is very close to the prophet Elisha. Elisha is the one who looked to God one day and said, I want a double portion of Elijah's spirit. Elijah had performed eight miracles. Elisha wanted a double portion. He was going to perform 16. And Gehazi was standing in one of the greatest of all the miracles that Elisha performed. A man by the name of Naaman, a Syrian leper who was a general, came to Elisha and wanted to be healed of his leprosy. And Elisha said to him, you go to the river Jordan and dip in that river Jordan seven times. Naaman was very upset at this rather ridiculous requisition, go to the river Jordan and dip in the river Jordan seven times. But his soldiers said to him, Mr. General, if it is going to rid you of your leprosy, why don't you listen to Elisha and go and do it? So he takes the requirement, goes in there, the medals come off, the uniform comes off. Can't you just see it? He's about to dip in this muddy river Jordan. He'd already told Elisha, our rivers in Damascus are far superior to this. Can't you just see what is going on in his mind? When I get back to Syria, my soldiers are going to tell the people what I actually did. I got into a dirty little river because some prophet here told me I'll get rid of leprosy. So he goes, one, two, three. A New York preacher preached on this entitled Seven Ducks in a Muddy Pond. I like that title. Seven Ducks in a Muddy Pond. He goes down for the seventh time, comes up, looks down, and there is no leprosy. He gets onto his animals, rides in the direction of Elisha, and he says this to him, what do I owe you for what you have done for me? Elisha was one of those rare itinerant men who said, you owe me nothing. You owe me absolutely nothing. You just go back and worship the Lord, your God. Gehazi is watching this. In the New Testament, we are told there was nobody ever healed of leprosy until Elisha had healed Naaman. He was witnessing a first. And what happens as Naaman goes out through the front door, Gehazi slips out through the back door, follows him, and he says this, Mr. General, sir, I come to you not for myself. I come to you for some young men who have come to study under Elisha. So this is not for me. I heard you have some gold. I heard you have some silver. I heard you have some food. I heard you have some clothing. Would you give it to me? This is not for me. This is for those young men who've come to study under Elisha. I want you to know I'm a very selfless person, but very kind. This is for those boys. So Naaman says, take whatever you want. And he saddles up his donkeys, goes, Gehazi does, puts all of the stuff into his home, turns around and comes back. Elisha's waiting for him and says, where were you? Gehazi says, nowhere in particular. <laughs> I am a father of three. I know when I ask my children, where were you? And they say, nowhere in particular. It is imperative that I find out where they were in general. <laughs> So Elisha says, Gehazi, now you need to remember who this Elisha is. Do you remember what Gehazi had told Elisha? That the king of Syria is astounded that you hear in your bedroom what he says in his. Gehazi did not need any more empirical evidence, but he really thought he'd wave this wand over Elisha. I was nowhere in particular. Elisha says, Gehazi, you're a liar. I know where you were. You followed Naaman. You painted this lie. You've taken those things and put it into your room. And then that shocking of all endings, he says, the leprosy which was Naaman's now becomes yours. You see, Gehazi had come to a point where he lived surrounded by truth without ever applying it in his own life. 